In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add or remove a role from a user, as well as how to check to see if a user has a role. So we'll be doing this within our own custom command. To start off, we have to create our own project, which you likely already have if you've been following along with this series. The first step is going to be importing everything we need, such as Discord.js and Warnoff Keys commands, or whichever command handler you prefer to use. You can do this with either the JavaScript imports or the TypeScript imports as you see here. Next, we want to create our own client that will represent our bot within our project, and we need to pass in what we intend to use within this bot. In this case, we need to pass in the guilds and guild messages intent like we are here. We can then listen for whenever our client is ready, and we can initialize Warnoff Keys commands by passing in the client, specifying where our commands directory is, and also passing in TypeScript is true because I am going to be using TS Node within this video. If you are compiling your TypeScript into JavaScript, or if you're just using JavaScript in general, you do not have to include this line. And then finally, I'm specifying my test server ID here. That way we can create a guild based slash command and not a global slash command. The last step is to log into your bot. My token is within the .env file in my project, so I'm going to log in by accessing the environment variable like so. So I've made a new file within my commands directory. This file is called role.ts, and if you use JavaScript, you would make a role.js instead. Within here, I'm first going to specify all the different actions I want to give the user within this command. For example, we can give a role, we can remove a role, or we can check to see if a user has a role. We then want to export an empty object from this file. Within JavaScript, you would use module.exports equals an empty object. And within TypeScript, you can export an empty object like this. And also within TypeScript, if you're using one of keys commands, you can specify this object as a type of I command which is an interface that comes with one of keys commands that gives us additional autocomplete. From here, we want to specify a category and a description. You can use whatever strings you want here. We also want to specify what permissions are required in order to use this command. Some examples could be administrator or manage roles. We can now specify what arguments we need. In this case, we want a minimum of three arguments to be passed in from the user. And the arguments we want in this case will be one of the three actions from our actions array on line five, the users at, as well as the roles at. We then want to specify slash as both and test only is true. This will create both a legacy command and a slash command, but the slash command will only be created within the guild that we specified within our test servers array here. That way we don't have to wait up to an hour in order for our global slash commands to register and we can test things immediately. We also want to specify guild only is true. This will make sure that one of keys commands will check to see if the command is being ran within a direct message or within an actual server. Because we're working with roles which don't exist in messages, we want to make sure we are only running this command within a server. To create a slash command, you do have to pass in your own options here. In basic use cases, one of keys commands can create this behind the scenes based off of your expected arguments, but because we're going to be using choices here, we have to manually specify our options. So the first option will be our action. This will be one of the three things in our actions array. For example, give, remove, or has. In this case, we're going to pass in all of the standard slash command option requirements, such as a name and description, the type of option it is, as well as if it's required or not. Now, in this case, we're passing in a choices array. This will be an array of objects, and each object will have a name and value property. In this case, we're just going to pass in each individual action, which we're getting from looping through the array that we specified near the top of the file. Basically, this section of code here will force the user to enter in either give, remove, or has when using the slash command. Next, we're going to add in very simple user and role options. These are very basic user types and role types that are required. And obviously, you can add in whatever description you want for each of these. We can now create a callback method, and this will be ran every single time this command is ran. Within one of keys commands, we're given an object. In this case, we want to destructure guild, which is the guild where the command was ran, as well as args, which is a string array for each individual argument that's used. The first step is to gain access to the action from the arguments array and then see if the action exists, as well see if the action is a valid action from the actions array. If not, we're going to tell them it's an unknown action, and we're also going to list which actions are valid to use. Afterwards, we're going to gain access to the member ID and the role ID from the arguments. In the case of legacy commands, you're going to have the less than at symbol greater than syntax, as well as the and symbol for roles. So to make sure that we have the member ID and the role ID as consistent between legacy and slash commands, I'm going to remove all of those using some regex here. Essentially, this will make sure the input from legacy commands and slash commands is always going to be the exact same. The next step is to gain access to member or role from the guild by accessing the cache for member or roles respectively. 
Then we can add in some simple error checking to make sure the member and roles actually exist. Next, we can check to see if the action was has, and we can return a string such as user has role or user does not have role, depending on if they actually have it within the roles cache. We can now easily give the user a role by accessing member.roles.add and then return a role given string and a very similar concept for removing. Member.roles.remove with a role passed in, we'll go ahead and remove that role. And then finally, just to make sure that every edge case is covered, we can return an unknown action here, even though in reality, with how we wrote our code, this should never actually run. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal. I'm gonna go to new terminal. And within here, I can run my bots with npm run dev. So now within my testing server, I can do exclamation point role has, and then I can tag myself as well as tag a role such as moderator. And it'll say user has role, which is true. If I click on my user right here, we see moderator right there. So I'm going to try and remove this role with forward slash role. Here's the action list that we have. I'm going to select remove. I'm going to tag myself and I'm going to tag the moderator role. We can now select my user and we see I no longer have that role. And to make sure everything is working, I'm going to try and give that role back with the command. So forward slash role, give, tag myself, and then tag the moderator role. And here we see I have the role again. Now with how easy it is to add roles just through the Discord client, this command isn't very practical, but it is a good example of how to check to see if users have roles, as well as how to give or remove roles from certain users. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to download the source code, gain early access to new videos, as well as get your own Linux VPS, then consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking on the join button directly below this video.